What's going on guys, Lucas here to bring you yet another video, so thanks for tuning back in. And this is actually going to be the first episode of a weekly series that is called Worth the Watch. So if you've been keeping up with my normal Friday videos, The Weekend Watch, that is obviously a list of five recommendations for you to watch over that weekend. The Worth the Watch series is actually going to be coming out on Tuesday, so I know that this is a little bit late, but I wanted to take my time with this one, this being the first video of the series, and then also because of the show that we are talking about. So for this week's, in the very first Worth the Watch, we are going to be looking at House of the Dragon from HBO. So let's go ahead and jump right in, shall we? Now, I'm fairly certain that most people know what House of the Dragon is. It's probably been talked about or mentioned in your friend groups, whether you've realized it or not. Uh, I think it's fair to say that this is HBO's probably pride and joy of the year, their most anticipated show, and the numbers seem to have reflected that. So many people tuned into Sunday's debut of this show that they actually crashed HBO servers, and I believe the last time something like this happened was that final season of Game of Thrones. So, I think House of the Dragon has been reviewed, or viewed, pretty well so far, but this is not for those people who know what it is, what to expect, and no, this is not a spoiler video. This is for those people who might be on the fence about it. You know, dragons, swords, knights, maybe it's not for me. I couldn't really get into Game of Thrones. Maybe you missed that bandwagon altogether and felt like it was too late by the time everybody was watching. Whatever it may be, this is for those people. So, let's go ahead and break down, is House of the Dragon worth the watch? Now let's go ahead and start from the very beginning. Uh, I would go ahead and have to say yes. I do believe that House of the Dragon is worth the watch, even if you are not a fantasy fan. And the reason I say that is because these characters are very compelling. This is a very talkative kind of show. And if you enjoyed those middle seasons of Game of Thrones, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. When they were actually playing the Game of Thrones and not so much about the White Walkers, which was still good. But this is actually what that show is going to be centered around, is that inner turmoil of the Targaryen family, the civil war that is about to break out as they kind of lead us into no from the trailers in this first episode. There are a lot of callbacks to Game of Thrones, but are they callbacks if it takes place before the events of Game of Thrones? Are they throw forwards? I don't really know. But there's a lot of references to Game of Thrones for those eagle-eyed fans who are looking for the little Easter eggs. So pay on attention for those if you are already watching and watch Game of Thrones. If not, it will all become clear if this show is for you and you stick with it and actually transition into Game of Thrones. But more than that, this show is beautifully crafted. The the sets look amazing. They don't look very CGI heavy driven. And sometimes you know that with these big grand scales, they kind of have to be. It does not appear overly bad CGI. The acting is top notch all around. I don't think there's a single bad actor on this cast that we've seen yet. So the casting seems to be spot on. I like the changes from the book. I have read some of the book, not all of it, but some of the things to come and some of the depictions and differences in the characters are actually really good changes that actually bring the world a little bit closer together because I think that was something that Game of Thrones had a problem with is distances and traveling and how fast people can get to different areas um, you know all of a sudden this guy can just run from well above the north wall all the way down like yeah this whole bunch of things like that happen in Game of Thrones and I think this show is going to do a good job of trying to keep everything a little bit tighter which is a very good creative choice I also want to say that this show has some of the great writing that Game of Thrones had as well. Now we're going to put the final season of Game of Thrones behind us. I think that it's fair to say that this kind of has not washed out the bad taste, but it has made us remember the good times in Westeros, if you could call them good times. But to wrap it up, just very simply, very shortly, I do believe that this is worth the watch. I believe that if you were somebody who enjoys a good story-driven show, this is definitely for you. If you enjoy the spectacle and the grandioseness of seeing really big sweeping pieces, this is for you. And yes, there are dragons. Yes, there are knights. So I am seeing the hesitation from a lot of people who may not be interested in that fantasy era or that genre in general, but definitely give the show a watch. If you enjoy shows like The West Wing, where it's a lot of very talky heads and it's fast dialogue and it's quippy and schemes like secession, all those types of things, then this show would be very interesting to you. So just sit down and give it an episode because I really do think that House of the Dragon is worth a watch. 
And that's going to wrap up this week's and the very first Worth the Watch. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching this far into the video. If you have not done so already, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and then drop a comment down below. Let me know. Have you seen House of the Dragon? What do you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you planning to watch it? Did this video help make a decision for you in any type of way? Or is there something you want to see me cover on next week's Worth the Watch? Whatever it may be, I would love to hear from you guys. With that being said, Lucas here, and I'll see you in the next one.